My name is Lee Kane, L-E-E-C-A-I-N. Yuri, can you just spell your name out loud for me real quick? U-R-I-E-L. Last name is Isakovich. I-S-A-A-C-O-V-I-C-H. Fantastic. When did you join the service? I joined through the delayed entry program in January of 1996. Now, uh, Yuri, when did you join the Army? 1972. Why did you join? I come from a long line of uh, military uh, service members, so that was one of the reasons why I joined. Can I ask why did you join the Army? Well, both of my parents had been in the Army, and uh, to be honest with you, I got, uh, I got arrested for a juvenile offense. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's not a problem. My, that's how my dad got in. What was your MOS? Uh, I was a 13 Mike multiple launching rocket systems crew member, uh, field artillery. Now, what was your job supposed to be? Well, I took the ASVAB, that's the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, and they said I could do anything I wanted. Well, I decided that I wanted to go into Special Forces. But there was a problem. I was slightly colorblind. So I opted for sniper school. What made you interested in doing a documentary on the VA? Well, the VA is a crucial part of uh, former service members' lives. It's a huge um, organization. Uh, that the government needs to regulate uh, a little bit better than they do. May I ask one of the reasons why you are uh, doing the documentary uh, and why one of the reasons why you're participating uh, in HUA? Well, because, well, HUA stands for Helping Others Overcome and Heal. And it is a support group for victims of military sexual trauma. How has your experience with the VA been? My experience with the VA has uh, not been very fantastic. I, they, they had misdiagnosed me uh, for over two decades now. Um, and it's, it's, I should say, it's not just the fact that they said, you know, you have anxiety attacks, which I did and I do, However, I was having temporal lobe seizures, uh, and so I had a, I ended up dying for three minutes in August of uh, 2020, and then the next week on August uh, August 11th, I had another my second grandma seizure, and it they refused to give me X-rays. I had a broken jaw, broken shoulder, left me with a broken jaw for six weeks. So now it's not uh, they're not able to do surgery without a higher risk of facial paralysis that law of diminishing return. But that sums up my uh, experience with the, the Veterans Administration. Has the VA taken any steps to remedy this? No. Um, as a matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. Uh, the second that we I called and I spoke to, I, I believe her name was Lisa, who is supposed to be a veterans advocate or an ombudsman, and she also is the site manager. Um, so the doctor, Dr. Jennifer Bulger, who once again refused me treatment um her 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 supervisor is supposed to be our uh once again our our ombudsman or our advocate so no and she said what does it matter you're alive um uh you were telling me about your initial experience with the va yeah my initial experience with the va was not a good one because um <clears throat> At first, they didn't even have any records. They said, oh, well, we don't have any record of you ever being in. Okay. And um, ooh, that, that, that ticked me off a little bit. Yes. 
Yes. And if I remember correctly, um, didn't you, you had some issues uh, that you had to get straightened out because of that, because they had, the VA had misclassified or had lost your information. Um, you, you had an experience um, uh, that was kind of uh, terrifying. You know, you had to go, you had to deal with some police officers, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, a, a veteran service organization that I was um, affiliated with had me arrested, said I was, uh, had me arrested for uh, stolen valor and said that uh, I didn't, uh, I, I was never in the service and that I was um, um, scamming them to get benefits that were not, uh, uh, that I was not entitled to. Can I ask, have, has that uh, organization, that VSO, have they attempted to correct their deficiencies? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, they continue, they even continue to, uh, to uh, say the same things about me. Have you contacted any elected officials? I have. Uh, I've contacted state officials like Andrew Goodell's office. Uh, I've also spoken with Congressman Reed's office. Have you contacted any um, elected officials? And if you have, have you gotten any response from them? The only official that I got a response from was uh, Kristen Gillibrand. And she actually took my story before Congress. Do you have any advice for people who are interested in joining the service? I would, I would highly recommend that they take their time and they uh, speak with veterans, speak in, in veterans they don't know, especially, uh, because one of the things that they need to hear is the truth. There, you have to be prepared for an environment that you've never been in. And it's not just the diversity, it's the fact that we all have, um, every human being has unresolved uh, mental health issues. Uh, however, there's also a lot of proclivities in the military. You have to remember you have a lot of young people coming in. It's their first time being on their own. Uh, and so we don't always have the best decision-making paradigm. Um, and right now, one of the biggest things still is the fact that command uh, doesn't take, uh, they take more of a, a reactive uh, than a proactive approach to a lot of the issues that plague not just the military, but society, such as sexual assault uh, and violent, violent crimes and so on and so forth. And, and that's just something that a lot of people aren't prepared for. So my biggest advice is uh, make sure that you're educated. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I guess the one last question that I have for you is, is this, is what advice would you have for anybody who's considering going into the military? I'm sorry, don't do it. Uh, no need to apologize. No need to apologize. And, you know, I, I thank you so much. Um, you know, I love you. You're my brother. Obviously, we're, we're veterans. Um, and we're, we are sharing our story with everybody. Um, is there anything else that you, you got? I, I do want to say <clears throat> something about veteran service organizations. Okay. <clears throat> I'm a life member of the Disabled American Veterans. They have done a lot for me and they continue to advocate for people like us before Congress. I'm also a member of the American Legion. I'm sorry, they're a bunch of drunks and all they are is uh, a drinking club. Yes. Yes. And as far as getting my benefits and what have you, I'm not a member of it, but I'll tell you, the VFW has some of the greatest, greatest um, veteran service officers that will advocate for you, stick by their guns, 
and get you through the process. Well, thank you very much, Sherry. Uh, thank you for your time. And I will be calling you here in a little while. Um, I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much. Love you, brother. Love you, bro. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you. Thanks.